Good morning, Modern Steaders. This morning, I'm gonna show you some more of the great, delicious meats we have curing for my three-day pig harvesting class. Everything I'm showing you right now, this is why we raise our animals. We're not raising our animals to raise the cheapest food we can. We're raising our animals so we can get the most delicious and healthy food for our family. Let me show you what we got curing down here in our refrigerator. First, we'll take out the mother load. We have this beautiful rear leg, ham, whatever you'd like to call it, that we're curing and turning into a prosciutto. Talk about an authentic prosciutto. Once this is all cured in the refrigerator for 30 days, we could hang this above our TV or above our bed in the house for a year or three or five. Wouldn't that be a beautiful thing? We'll have to see what Gina has to say about that. But we're working on her. And Doug and Andy were helping. Thanks, Doug and Andy. But now that we have this in the refrigerator, every day we need to check on it and give it some love. We want to make sure everything stays covered nicely with salt. Let me bring you in closer. We don't want any of the meat showing. So once a day, we need to go into our refrigerator and check it. And if we can see any of the meat, we're going to cover it with salt. We can pull some of the salt up from the bottom. If we don't have enough, we've got a bag of salt in here we can use. And we're using pure Himalayan sea salt. The bottom of the tub is covered with salt. You won't be able to buy this in a store. You can get prosciutto, but it's not real prosciutto like what we're making here. How many people can say they have a prosciutto hanging in their house that they've made with their own pasture-raised pigs? I don't think too many, but this is going to be delicious. We're going to have to restrain ourselves from eating it. That's going to be the hard part. I'm going to put this back in the refrigerator and pull out some more of the beautiful meats we have curing. Pluto wants in on this action. Right here we have a small portion of bacon that we have curing. We're using the equilibrium method, which is more of a wet cure. It's not just dry salting it this way. You measure it, you figure out how much salt you need, and you're not going to over salt your bacon. On this piece of bacon, we're using salt, maple syrup, and black pepper. We're going to cure it in a bag for around 10 days in the refrigerator. Once a day, I need to go in here, give it a nice massage. Just give it a light rubbing and then flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. And that's all there is to it. That's done for the day. You get to do it again tomorrow morning. Mm. What a great way to start your day. Playing with some fresh, pasture-raised, soon-to-be bacon. <sighs> this is just as bad as playing with sausage first thing in the morning. I'm hungry. And then right here we got this beautiful copa that we're curing. Oh, this is the same way, we just need to rub it and turn it over once a day. That's it, that's all there is to it. And once all this meat is done curing, we can hang it in our house. Talk about food security. That is so much, this, that's freedom right there, that's food freedom. I don't need refrigeration to store all this once this is done. So I mean this is just beautiful. But yep, that's all there is to it. But that's not all. We have more meats we need to take out. <clears throat> we 
Now we cut our bellies into four sections on one side and six sections on the other side. That way we can try different cures and different smoking to see what flavor we would like. That's why when you're curing your own meats, you're not doing the whole belly at once and then tasting it and being like, I don't like this. It's a great idea Doug and Andy have. Let's start small, try different ones, try them unsmoked, try smoking them, try adding a little bit more sugar, a little less, whatever you want. This slab of bacon right here, we have salt, brown sugar, and black pepper. Mm, that just sounds delicious too. Curious to see the difference between brown sugar and maple syrup. You can do molasses, there's so many different ones we can try. We have lots and lots of apple trees here on the property, so we gotta get a smoker built. And then when we prune in our trees, we're gonna have apple smoked bacon. Oh, I, oh, that sounds so delicious. Apple wood smoked maple pasture raised bacon. If that doesn't make you drool and hungry, I don't know what would. And I'm sorry, I'm hungry now. Well, let's get to work here. We need to rub our bacon. Come on, get a nice rubbing. Give us some loving. We, we've been loving on this bacon the whole time we've been raising it. We were loving on it the way we killed the animal, the way we slaughtered the animal, and the way we butchered it. We've taken care and love through all the steps. And now we get to show it some more love. So we're just gonna rub it around lightly. Make sure the cure's in there good. And then we're just flipping it over. I know, it's that easy. Why do we ever get away from doing this? That's not a lot of work. And this next one, here we have some bacon jowl that we're curing. The recipe for this one is maple syrup and salt, no black pepper. We're gonna give it a rub down. Flip it over and rub this side down again. Now this meat can go back in the refrigerator and we'll get out the last bit of meat that we have curing right now. Right here we have some more jowl bacon. It's a little bit different of a spice recipe. We have salt, maple syrup and bruised juniper berries. That sounds a little different, but it smelled delicious when we made the seasonings up. Now, what we mean by bruised juniper berries is we bought juniper berries and we just crush them with your hands and it just lets out the scent and the flavoring and we're gonna get that into our bacon. So again, this morning, we just need to lightly rub the meat, give it some loving. Flip it over and do the same thing. We just gotta repeat this for 10 days. I can do this for 10 days. Oh, just think about all the beautiful breakfasts we'll be making here with this. BLTs, beans, a little bit of my beans, cornbread soups, oh, yeah. Some chicken corn chowder with bacon bits in it. That's delicious. It's just endless. We can slice up the jowl, put that in with our beans when we're baking our beans. I'm sure there's plenty of more recipes out there. So if you have any good recipes to use our bacon, our jowls, our copa, the prosciutto we won't be using anytime soon, but I'd love to hear your recipes. I'm getting hungry. Yeah. But yeah, if you have any good recipes, leave them in the comments down below. I'd love to hear them. Some of this is some new stuff for us too. We're going to be learning and sharing with you and it's going to be great once this bacon is cured. We get to try it and then we get to smoke it. Oh, this is going to be fun. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If it made you too hungry, I'm sorry, but good food should make you hungry. And the memories, this just isn't bacon for us anymore. Our meats, we have so many good memories wrapped up into our food now. We have Andy and Doug from Hand Hewn Farm coming out here, the time with them. All the modern setters that came out, all the hard work they put into our food, the community we built, the new relationships we've gained, the stories, the memories. This is going to be so much fun. Just another reason why a pig harvesting is a great 
thing to be doing with your neighbors and your friends. It's just a huge community building. So there's more to it than just food. This, this bacon child needs to go back into the refrigerator. I gotta go to work. Yeah. I'm looking forward for when these are done in eight more days. Oh baby, that's gonna be nice. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Tomorrow's video, we're gonna be uploading the first day, or the first part of the first day of the harvesting class. We're gonna be getting into the killing. I wasn't gonna put this video out on the killing, but the way it was done was very respectful. And to me, that was one of my biggest takeaways for the weekend, is how it went down. And this is how it needs to be done, and more people need to know it, and we've had a lot of modern steaders asking about it. So we'll be looking for that video tomorrow, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye. Do you want some bacon? Huh? You want bacon? Bacon. Give me some bacon. I want bacon.